Hi friends, this is Denario Research and welcome to the part number 6 of Cryptocurrency Trading Bot Tutorial. In the previous video we have done a lot of work in implementation of Data Analyzer, Risk Manager and Trade Emulator. Well, today we will continue improvement of all these uh, event loop components and also we'll start implementation of the position manager. I want to create a new file that I will use for all trading related logic. So let's cr create it. And let's save it as BFX. Because we trade on Bitfinex. And call it bfxtrade.js. I have created object BFX trade and this object will have only one property. This property is initial amount. And let's it make equal to 100. Actually, this initial amount will be used only for backtesting purposes and it represents uh, our balance of the virtual account on the exchange. So, in our case, we assume that we have already 100 bitcoins that will be used for further trading. Also, we need a function for this test trading. So let's create one. Bfxtrade.prototype. Let's call this function test trade. Function. And this function will have following arguments. The first one is of course pair that will trade. Second one would first be a price, amount and type. Type is either buy or sell trade. And finally callback function. Buying and selling processes should be considered separately, so we will have two cases for buy orders and sell orders. Let's use switch for this. Type case buy and case sell. When we buy, we'll deduct some portion of bitcoins from our initial amount. So our initial amount will be decreased a little bit. Minus equal price multiplied by amount. Amount is actually amount of the currency we plan to buy like Ethereum or Monero or Dash and its current price. When we buy we'll decrease our init amount uh, by this value. And we, when we finish we have to return callback. Callback function will be used a little bit later and do the opposite for sell order when we sell we increase our initial amount by price multiplied by amount and return, return callback of course when we trade on Bitfinex the exchange may charge us maker or taker fee and we have to take into account this uh, in order to be more realistic in our trading emulation. So let's include fees in our test trade function. Let's take uh, the worst uh, case like maker fee which is 0.2%. And maker fee for selling also 0.2%. This means that fees will be deducted from our initial amount when we buy 
and when we sell. Now we are able to integrate BFX Trade with manager.js. Let's import it. Okay, good. So let's go to position functions, open, long, short, and close, and put trade function here. Okay, let's start with long position open bfx dot test trade. The first argument is pair, it will provide pair. The next argument is price, because we will open a long position at close price, we can provide it too. Well, the third argument is amount, we will we'll have to calculate this amount. But firstly we need to create another property for our pair object. And this property will be called entry amount. Actually, amount we enter position with. And here as an amount, we'll provide this entry amount. As other type we buy and as a callback we we'll create a function where we place all this output. Let's copy and paste simply inside. Well, how we calculate this entry amount? In my opinion, position management is the most difficult part of algorithmic trading. And I think it deserves a separate video or even video series for this. But today we'll make it very simple calculation. We'll take some portion of our initial amount and we'll actually divide our initial amount by the length of this array. So when we open a long position, we'll take one third of our initial amount. Let's create a function get position size. And calculate this position size. This function will return our initial amount in amount divided by first array length minus number of currently open positions. We have to create this variable open positions and implement this variable in each function. Open positions equals zero. When we open a long position, we increase this counter. The 
same for short position. When we close long position, we decrease counter. And when we close short position, we decrease counter too. This function lets us dedicate equally one third of our initial amount to each pair. Let's replicate this test trade function for sh opening short position. Okay, let's copy get position function. short but instead of buy we open short position with selling close on parenthesis okay done for short for long position close, we do not need any entry amount calculation because we already have it. So let's just copy this rule. When we close long position, we need a pair, closing price, entry amount. We place sell order and here is our callback function, but in this callback function we need to reset entry amount and make it equal to zero. Similarly to short position close, but instead of sell we need to buy back our borrowed Currency close parenthesis. And reset entry amount. Also I want to print the result of each trade when we close long and short position. As a result, I want to see current state of initial amount. So let's console log it. Pair name. Result amount is the fix init amount. Copy this row, close short position function. As well, I'd like to see the number of concurrently opened positions. Opened positions. Opened positions. Let's copy this text. Actually, we can run a backtest now. Let's hit save and go to console. Note abbot.js. Hmm. We have error, what is expected, and we cannot find module bfix.rate. Let's try to figure out what's wrong. Let's find this file. And the problem is that file name is provided incorrectly. These letters should be in lower case. Let's hit save and run again. Okay, and now we have another error and entry amount is not defined row 26. Yes, it's a stupid problem. We forgot to define entry amount. Hit save and Try again. 
finally it works. As you see, trading results are horrible. We have almost lost our initial 100 bitcoins. Currently we have only 1.3 1, 1 and one position opened. But actually it is okay, because it's very basic implementation of Blade Runner strategy and in 100% cases it is unsuccessful implementation and this current state of the strategy needs improvement. So let's start tracking the number of successful and unsuccessful trades. Where success equals to zero and var loss equals to zero. If we close position at profit, we increment success counter. counter. Success. And similarly for short, when we close short position for profit, we increment success counter. If we fix losses, we increment loss counter. Okay, and let's print these counters. Pair. Number of successful trades. And number of unsuccessful trades. Let's copy this for sure. Also, let us print the amount we buy when we open a long or short position. position. And close and amount. Close amount. And add this to the short position too. Okay, let's hit save and run code again. Well, we had almost 25,000 successful trades and we lost all our money. How it's possible? One of the reasons that we probably have some weird mistake in the code that causes such situation. Let's try to figure out it. One of the mistakes is in incorrect position size calculation. Because this function returns amount of bitcoins we need to, for trade. But in test trade function we use the amount of base currency like Dash, Monero and Ethereum. So we have to take into account a uh, price of the base currency in order to get a proper entry amount. So let's give price as an argument here and price here. In order to get the amount in base currency we have to divide amount of bitcoins by price. Let's hit save and run code again. But our results are still horrible. So we have lost almost all money. In order to figure out what is the problem, let's try to 
print the amount we close position with so the amount that we sell or we buy on a short position also I have found out that success and loss trackers are in the wrong places okay and one more improvement we have to place all these resets below text output and do the same here let's hit save and run code again it will not change much of course but it will provide more insights on what is going wrong here let's look at this dash trade we have opened short position at this price and have closed this short position at even higher price but for some reason this trade is considered as successful because in our data analyzer we do not take into account entry price value we compare only close price and current moving average value but we do not compare close price and our entry price and but we can only take profit when our close price is lower than our entry price for short position and similarly for long position we can take profit only when our close price is higher than our entry price so we need to improve our data analyzer to take into account entry price so let's add entry price as new parameter to pairs object let's make it equal to zero how do we calculate this entry price when we open a long position our entry price should be equal to close price to close price Similarly for short position, entry price equals to short price. When we close long position, we have to reset entry price. As well for short position, also reset. Ok, now let's include entry price into data analyzer in order to take profit at long position our close price must be greater than entry price and in order to take profit at short position close price must be less than entry price but we need to take into account exchange fees in order to reach break even our close price must be at least 1.4 percent 0.4% higher than our entry price so let's multiply it by 1.04% and for short position close price must be less than entry price deducted fees so let's multiply it by 0. percent ok let's hit save and run code again well 
Number of winning and losing trades looks more or less realistic, but we still lose money. So, two things should be fixed. Firstly, let's look at this dash trade. We have opened a short position at this price and our stop loss price is following. But we close short position and fix losses at different price that is even higher than our stop loss price. It is because instead of putting stop loss price here we use close price. So let's fix it. And do the same for long position. So when we close long position and fix losses, we close this at stop loss price. Similarly for short, when we fix losses at short position, we close it at stop loss price too. Let's look at another issue we need to fix. As you see, we have a negative result amount in this Ethereum trade. This has happened because of incorrect short position open and short position close. Because when we have opened a short position for Ethereum, we have borrowed some amount of Ethereum and sold them. And when we have sold them, we have received some extra amount of bitcoins that were added to our initial amount. And when we have opened a long position for Monero, we have used one third of this result amount, so approximately 65 bitcoins. And these 65 bitcoins were deducted from the result amount. And when we have closed a short position for Ethereum, we have deducted again some amount of bitcoins when we have bought back borrowed uh, early Ethereum. So, in order to fix this, we should not take into account bitcoins that we receive from this short selling. So, let's try to fix that. To do this, we have to add another argument to test trade function. So let's mark every trade as long trade, like for open long position, for short position let's mark it as short trade. Again long. and short. Also let's add this argument to be a fixed rate. Okay, so this implementation of trade function is valid for long position, open and close. So if action equals to long we will do this the following way and we need something else for short also if action equals to short equals to long, sorry. Let's do this way. And differently for short. We opened short position with selling. So when we sell some borrowed amount of Ethereum or whatever currency, we need to reserve this amount of bitcoins that we receive from selling. So let's create another property and call it reserve. This property would be initially empty JSON object. 
and here we reserve some amount of bitcoins reserve pair so this json object reserve will store our reserved amount reserve for pair equals to price multiplied by amount the next thing we have deduct this reserved amount from the our initial amount this init amount minus equal reserve pair also we need to take into account fees okay when we open a short position we reserve some amount of bitcoins we used to open this position next thing we deduct this reserved amount of bitcoins from the initial amount when we close short position we actually buy back initially sold currency so to do this we have to return our reserve we have returned reserve and add the difference between reserve and amount of bitcoins we used to buy back currency so this looks like minus price multiplied by amount In order to make this more beautiful from the thematic point of view, let's do this. And also let's include fees. Okay, when we close short position, we return reserved amount and at difference between reserve amount and amount of bitcoins we used to buy back currency and also include fees let's save files and run code again well our bot works correctly now but we still do not make any money from this strategy and in the upcoming videos we'll make a lot of optimizations in order to try to turn it into profitable strategy. In this video we have finished our trade emulator, so let's move it into done tab. Also we have completed data analyzer, so let's move it done tab too. We have started to work on position manager so we can move it into in progress mode and this is all for today thumbs up if you like this video subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and leave your questions in the comment section below bye